Well, happy Saturday morning. I am glad you could join us. The other person I'm glad that could join me is Matt Allen, who seemed to go on a carnival fun vacation and uh, left me stranded here for a couple weeks. I am Dave Riccio. This is Bumper to Bumper Radio, and he is Matt Allen, the sometimes co-host. <laughs> and this is something we do every Saturday from 11 to noon right here on KTAR. We are creating realistic expectations for auto purchasing, auto repair, anything auto. So if you've got car questions, we've got answers. So we encourage you to give us a call at 602-277-5827. 602-277-KTAR. Today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, eh, a little touch of air condition. We, of course, as always, are taking your phone calls and how to deal with that intermittent automotive issue. My intermittent issue is not a car issue, but right now I have an intermittent iPhone issue. I you were saying you have an intermittent guest issue. <laughs> intermittent guest I, I, issue as well. Issue. I, I, mean, I, feel uh, like I, I really am glad you can make it. I feel and, like uh, a guest today, but... Uh, <laughs> What am I supposed to do again? Hey, right. If the phones don't work right, don't blame me. <laughs> Push those buttons over there is all okay. you got to do. Okay. So my iPhone, it doesn't work every, like, third week. You know, I put it up to my ear, and the, the buttons are still active, and it pushes. And I go down to the store, and it's, it's perfectly fine. All I want another phone. But it, it never acts up when I go to the store. And intermittent issues are something we deal with all the time in our shops. And I bet you're thinking right now of an intermittent problem that you have with your car that happens so infrequently that you know you're going to go to the shop, and it's like going to the doctor. When you go to the doctor, you don't feel sick. You're going to take it in the shop, you're going to get in the car, you're going to drive with a guy, and nothing's going to happen, and you're going to be embarrassed because of this intermittent issue. But uh, there is ways to handle intermittent issues, and there's ways that they're hard to handle. Well, so there, there's we, all kinds. I mean, we have diagnostic issues of my car stalls, and just once in a while it uh, just shuts off or or – or the brakes squeak like, um, well, it didn't do it yesterday or today, but the other day it did it kind of when I was doing something. There's, so it's some sort of circumstance or, well, I always think of electrical issues because that's the most intermittent issue that we deal with at our shop. And someone has an issue. And the one I can think of is we had one come in with a, a basically a, the code, diagnostic trouble code was for a bad shift solenoid. Well, the first thing we do is now. We go, hold on a minute, Dave. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, beat you up a little bit. The code doesn't say there's a bad shift solenoid. It's well, probably a code for a performance issue of the circuit or something no, like no, that. No, no, it right? was actually yeah, it was an electrical circuit fault. Okay. In so. relation to this solenoid. Okay. So the word solenoid was in there. <laughs> okay. So not so a bad the solenoid. customer went to AutoZone and he said, "Hey, you know, they told me I got a bad solenoid, so I want a new solenoid." Yeah. So, um, I said, "Well." You know, we'll test it out. We'll diagnose it. We see what we find, and you may very well need a solenoid, but let's check it out. So we go drive it, and the transmission works perfect. And we see the code. We clear the code. The code does not come back. We test that solenoid. Guess what? It tests perfectly. Well, uh, He still wants a solenoid. So guess what? Careful what you wish for, though. We sold him one. Just a trial and error thing because it was so intermittent. It was only happening once a week, once every two weeks. We sold him a solenoid, and guess what? Three days later, no boy came no. back, same solenoid code. So that's an intermittent issue. Any technician can, you know, he can have all the skills in the world, but if it's not acting up at the time that he's looking at the car, all the tests that he's going to run are going to test normal. Yeah, and I mean, we can, like, like in the instance of a solenoid, we can run a test on that, and the bench test isn't exercising it like the car does. It's not, it's not hot. It's not, uh, you know, we put them and we bake them sometimes. We'll put them on a hot plate. We'll do things with them. But you, you've got to simulate these conditions, and just the perfect world of a bench test isn't always the same as being in the car and being under actual operating and loaded conditions. So they can be difficult. Well, so you have one of these intermittent issues going on with your car, and I guess the question is, when do you live with it? And when do you go track it down? And is it one of those issues where you're going 55 on the freeway or 75 on the freeway and your car just quits? Well, that's an issue we probably got to deal with. Can't, can't really let that one go. Well, so the question is, or uh, when do you deal with it is if you've lost some faith or confidence in the vehicle. If you're not comfortable driving it, yeah, it's, now it's time that to part with the car for a day or two or a week or whatever it may be so that the shop that you're working with can test drive this car, maybe use it to go 
run an errand, maybe have a technician drive it home at night and so that we can duplicate the problem. We need to feel or hear or see what's happening. That's almost the first step is, is all the time is duplicating it. Can we, can we replicate the problem? Well, when is it worth dealing with? So I'm going to give you another intermittent issue in my life other than my co-host. <laughs> uh, we have a, a shop truck. It's a 2002 Dodge, and every so often the windows just decide not to work. And uh, none of them roll down. So, you know, but it's one of those things where it's, it's intermittent. It's gone in five minutes. So by the time we even, you know, take, I'm pretty sure the master switch is bad on the driver's door because of the way it's acting, and I could certainly guess that, and I'd be 90% sure I would be right. Uh, I haven't even called to price a switch out, but it's probably a $100, $150 switch. I don't know. It's the master switch on the driver's door. Uh, so, you know, if, if it's a problem enough to just go ahead and replace it, I could guess with the switch, you know. It'd be a good educated guess. I'd be 90% sure, sure I'd be right. So if it's a breakdown issue or a confidence issue, it's probably more worth doing it. If it's if it's a, an annoyance, like the brakes squeak once in a while and the shop has looked at them and verified that there's good pad life, there's no safety issues, it's an annoyance, then you start to wonder how what's the value versus annoyance ratio. <laughs> the factor, that, right? Yeah. W- what is that? But then there's a lot of things that you can do as the owner of the vehicle where, you know what, you can take some notes. You, it, instead of saying, well, it just does it once in a while, get your notepad, get your iPhone, send yourself an email when it happens and, and establish a pattern. So what are the conditions? Maybe it was hot ambient temperature, but the car had just started when we say, cold, was it cold? Meaning the first startup in the morning? Was it uh, what we might call a hot soak? It happened after you drove for an hour and went in the grocery store for 30 minutes or something like that. The other but, the other question that's key and the, the one you want to take note of, and we always ask, how often does it happen? Well, every now and then. That's not the question that I ask. What's the frequency, you know, time over intensity? So does it happen once a day, once a week, once a month? For the technician, that's going to help us help guide you into not chasing an issue that we don't want to chase. Well, you know, that, because, because we're just, I mean, you're running up a bill because auto shops consider their time and how many tests they have to run. So one of the things you mentioned was having the technician drive it home. Sometimes that a that's, lot. A, that's a great tool. We've got, a, we've got a guy, a technician that works for us that lives 50 miles from the shop. And when somebody says it only happens every 45 miles, hey, I've got a guy. And it doesn't cost anything extra other than the gas in your car. So, I mean, that's one thing that we do. Yeah, that's just that's just part of one of the many ways that that we can help do this. I mean, it's tough for some shops to go drive in traffic. I mean, it, you know, they say it does it at seventy miles an hour. Fortunately, I'm downtown. I'm near a freeway. I can get out and go seventy miles an hour. But some guys aren't near a freeway. You know, you can't go blasting through a school zone at seventy. <laughs> so you've got to have somebody that can maybe drive it home. That that's one thing that's helpful. Well, for, and the, and really, when we're having this conversation, I'm thinking you as the consumer, you got a problem that you know you got to deal with. And it happens once every three days, okay? The auto shop may have your car for three days, you know? And that's, that's one way to look at it, but it's something that you, you know you have to go after because it is a safety concern. And the other thing, you may ask them if it doesn't feel like they're ready to dive into it, hey, would your guy be willing to drive it home? Because some, some shops don't ask and they don't think to, but, you know, that's a great tool. Well, and we're problem solvers by nature, technicians. I mean, I know I am. I want to fix the problem. I have some pride in that. And we always put undue pressure on ourselves. We've got to fix this. We've got to get it done by the end of the day. We've got to do this. Sometimes we need to back off and slow our roll a little bit. Easy, and, Nitro. And take some Move time. Move some of that pride over to showing up every Saturday and we'll be in good shape. <laughs> You know, I can't take a vacation two Saturdays and not get them stepped on. <laughs> so, uh, but, you know, another intermittent problem that we're going to start seeing, in, in which, which is a level of definitely frustration, is air conditioning. Ugh. It's the season now. Mm. And air conditioning sometimes and many times is a two-step process. You, you, we have multiple things. We have to have a fan that works. We have to have a system with integrity that is capable of working. And then you have to have the controllers that tell all this when to happen and when the AC should shut off. And oftentimes that, that's an intermittent problem or even a two-step process. So AC, I'm sure, will be a hot topic. It's a little cooler this weekend, and, and, uh, but get ready because it's coming. Well, if you've got any questions on your car or anything to do with maybe purchasing a new car or looking at a used car, you can give us a call at 602-277-5827. 
602-277-KTR. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, it almost feels like the first time again. A little bit of sweaty <laughs> palms back in front of the microphone. I'm Matt Allen, fresh off of vacation and ready to help you with your car, along with Dave Riccio. And together, we are Bumper to Bumper Radio every Saturday at 11, right here. Well, I did ask Matt to see his tan lines this morning to know if he was really on vacation. What scares me is he doesn't have any. <laughs> and I'm not white. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, up for this segment, we're going to go with Maria in Phoenix on a 2012 Honda Civic. Go ahead, Maria. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Uh, yes, I had a problem. I, I turned off my car, and I left the lights on for like 10 minutes. And when I turn it on, it will not turn it on. And uh, in the steering wheel, it was not locked. So... I, and I tried to turn the switch, and it didn't let me do it. And I tried to move also the the reverse and park, and it didn't let me. And I noticed that it has like a little thing, and I by the side like a little I don't know. And I push it there, and then the the I could move the thing reverse to park, but the but the switch it didn't want to turn it on. Okay. And the car was practically dead. Okay. Well, and, I, uh, Maria, I think I think there's you've got a couple problems all related to what sounds like the root, thing. the root cause is a dead battery, right? That just you left the lights on so the car won't start now and and, and it just mm-hmm. won't start, and and difficulty turning the key. So the first thing is you probably if you left the lights on for a short period of time, even in an hour. Mm-hmm. The battery was probably on its last leg anyway. There, that that's usually not enough time to kill the battery all the way. But mm-hmm. I bet if you're looking at the car right now, the position you're parked in, you probably have the wheels turned, and maybe it's up against a parking curb or on a curb, or or it's tight. Maybe the power steering was on. You had the wheels turned, and you shut the key off and take the key out, mm-hmm. and that puts a lot of load on the lock in the steering column, and that's probably why you're having difficulty. Turning the wheel. Is this a 2012 Civic? Yes, and also okay. it happened the second time that it happened, and then I let it rest for a little bit, and then it turned on like nothing happened. And then, uh, like uh, three weeks later, I took it for um, to do the flash the oil, the transmission oil, and everything. And uh, and when I tried to turn it on, it didn't turn it on again. So uh, they gave me a jump, and I went straight to AutoZone, and they put that little thing, like, to check what it was going on. And the battery, it was okay, and uh, everything I was fine. Okay. Well, if that's a 2012, I would suggest that that's probably under warranty if 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 it's that new of a car. would would probably be a safe bet. Year old. Yeah, it, it, unless it's got a whole lot of mileage. But... But what I was saying with the steering wheel turns like that, you've got to get some pressure off that lock in the steering wheel. So if, for example, if you're parked against a curb or in your driveway and and the wheels are turned sharp, you've got to turn them a little bit more in the same direction and then turn that key, and that will get the bind off the steering column lock and at least get the steering wheel freed up. And then the shifter issue is exactly what it's supposed to be doing. If you can't turn the key on, they don't want you to be able to get that car out of park and into any other neutral or gear without having your foot on the brake. So that's the shift interlock. So I think all these problems are, are going to be revolved around a battery issue. 602-277-5827. Thanks so much for the call, Maria. We are going to go with Todd in Litchfield Park. Looks like he's got a 2008 Mazda 3. Go ahead, Todd. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yes, I have a couple questions about my air conditioning. It's um, been acting up for six, eight months now, and the hot weather coming, I'm trying to get it fixed now. I noticed this, like, what if I'm making a left turn at a decent speed, 25 miles an hour, the air conditioning gets colder and the fan blows harder. And that's one character, and then a lot of times when it's on, it doesn't blow very cold if I'm not moving. And then there is one other thing. When I start it up, I'll turn it on, and I'll see my air, air conditioning green light come off and on, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if that's a compressor issue or what. Have you ever had to have any air conditioning repairs done in the past? Yes, I did. I had to have a tube replaced last year, a dealership tube, and they had to evac the system and refill it. 
And then did this, was this a similar situation you had prior to that and it was solved with that? Or is this a, a problem that happened immediately after the repair or, or is just starting to sh- surface now? It, it's been gradually getting worse. Okay. Well, I, it sounds like some weird problems. First off, turning left and right. I mean, I'm, I'm picturing maybe a blend door or something flapping open and closed, which would be definitely a strange deal. But the thing on air conditioning that where we always need to start, we need to make sure that this car has a full charge of refrigerant all the time. And the only way to do that is to go to a shop that has the right equipment where we can hook up to the car and recover and measure by weighing in ounces how much refrigerant was in the car and then compare that to what it's supposed to have. So if you've got if it needs 16 and you've only got 12, your four ounces short, I'm just checking my math. <laughs> a little rusty. You but, are a little rusty. But, but so we need to we need to start with the in good integrity of the system and make sure it's full of charge. Then we can do some testing to make sure it's working right and identify leaks. Well, when we were talking about intermittent issues and air conditioning intermittent issues and frustration with it, you were talking a little bit about it's a two step process to get the air conditioning checked out. And we've talked we've had a show before we talked about you know, you're going to go in and get a service. They may go ahead. Everything may look good. They may add just a touch of Freon or just verify it. Uh, <clears throat> there's a die that's put in, and then it may work great for the next week, two weeks, three weeks, but then it may start to act up again or it's not blowing as cool as it was at that time. Cool but not cold is the cool, classic but symptom cold. of a low charge. So at that point, go back to the shop that serviced it. It's not that they didn't know how to service it the first time. That's a regular everyday thing. They're going to put a black light on the system, if it is in fact low on on charge, and they're going to look for a leak that's uh, happening, and then uh, fix the leak and evacuate it and recharge it again. But Dave, I mean, so people are wondering why you putting a black light on it. There, we put an ultraviolet dye in the system that gets carried through the system with the oil. In in theory, if there's a leak, that pressure will force this dye out, and then we can find that with the ultraviolet light. So we've got to start with a full charge. A low charge is going to equal low pressure. Low, these cars have low pressure cycling switches to protect the compressors. So that can make a compressor cycle. It can still blow ice cold air and cycle too fast and get it coming on and off. And that could be why the green light's coming. Well, on. one thing that's going to happen is, you know, when you first flicked on your air condition for the first time this year, man, it feels like it works pretty good. A low charge system feels pretty darn good when it's only 80 degrees outside. But now we're going to hit the 90 mark. And as soon as we hit the 100-degree mark, it, the phones start ringing as far as, I need my air condition checked out, I need it checked out. You can be a little bit proactive and get that done before it becomes 110 degrees. So, I mean, that's one of the things that, that goes on. We'll beat the rush. And that's one thing that we're going to focus on at our shop this year is we need to let everybody needs to know. You know, we don't, if, let's just pretend you were a half a pound of refrigerant low. And when and people, oh, half pound, that's not that much. That is huge in air conditioning. I mean, you can overcharge by a couple ounces and you're in, in, in big trouble. But we don't know if the, you lost this half pound of refrigerant over the last four weeks, over the last four years, or the last four months. So we, we just don't know how long it's going to last. And like we've said before, it's often two steps. We've got Jim, Mike, and Dee Dee, and we've got a couple open lines at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, and he is Matt Allen, and we are your KTR car guys. And we're here answering phone calls at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. And we've got a couple of lines open. So uh, any cruises planned here in the future? Oh, yeah, rookie. Rookie mistake there. Better turn that <laughs> microphone on, huh? I was going to say, don't put me on the spot there, Dave. Uh, I love putting you on the spot. We didn't have a poo cruise, though. <laughs> that was the best part. <laughs> well, when it was Carnival, I decided to go ahead and put a life insurance policy on you for a key man. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say that? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. No, I, um, it was a lot of fun. Good time, and, but definitely good to be back. Uh, had some quality time with the family, which was most important. You know, yeah. This gig on Saturdays, it. It's uh, it's right in the middle of the day. It's uh, 
you know, we put a lot out to be able to help take care of the, the people that need help with their cars. The motoring was, public. That's right. So speaking of which, besides having some open lines, 602-277-5827 is the best way to get a hold of us. And I know a lot of people are shy. I've called into the radio before we did this, and you get a little clammy. Don't be shy. Nobody can see you. Don't worry about it. Nobody's going to know who you are. We'll help you with your car. And if you are too shy to call in, Bumper to Bumper Radio is always on. You can always go there. Find Dave and I under the contact page. We will answer your questions. You can find us on Facebook. Facebook, obviously, and then Bumper to Bumper Radio. Ask questions there. We'll interact with you during the show if you want to put something up there. We're always here for you is my point. Well, up for this segment, we are going to go with John in New River, 1997 S10. Go ahead, John. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yes, I've got a uh, 440 code that's been plaguing me. I've done vacuum checks and determined that I don't have a a hose leak. I've changed the uh, vapor tank pressure switch, which was bad, and uh, I've also changed the vent valve, which they say is bad. And I still have the problem. On my freeze frame, it indicates 8.8 inches of pressure for testing. Uh, But I heard that you got to have 10 10 inches uh, water column for testing. I don't know the I don't know how the testing goes. I don't know the uh, the way the system is designed. Can you help me out on this? What's the description of a PO four four? It's some kind of evap leak. So you really it's uh, it's an evaporation at vapor evap uh, a problem. Well, the first thing we have to do, you've got to make sure that the system is sealed and has, you know, similar to the air conditioner. It's got to have the ability to hold the vacuum if you're if you're measuring that pressure. So the obvious things, gas tank, you know, gas caps, vacuum hoses, and we're going to be testing that stuff with, you know, with the smoke. We call it a smoke machine, but, you know, picture your old choo-choo train when you were a kid. You had to, to put the sauce in there and it made smoke. Well, we have the same thing. We put a light, light amount of pressure on the system, and we're going to look for any smoke leaking out. We've got to start with a sealed system, whether that's the lines, the vent valve maybe functions mechanically or electrically, but it's stuck mechanically could be you know some issues. I know we, we've replaced some of these parts. Uh, could well, you- his, his question was, you know, how does the thing function? And, and I'm asking the same question. Is that there's a pump that pressures this thing? You know, and on a Chrysler, it's an LDP leak detection pump, which is a vacuum operated pump, I believe it is. You know, with solenoids to create vacuum. But on a General Motors, right off the top of my head, I don't know what does that. So maybe I was thinking, Matt, you might have more information. There you go again. See, Dave. putting you on the spot. I love well, it. I mean, it could be charcoal canister. There's a number of different things it could be, but we need to start then isolating out the system. If the specification is calling for 10 inches of water, I think is the pressure, or whatever the specification is, if we can't achieve that, now we've got to start isolating. Let's block off the lines closer to the tank and see if we're if we're getting the pressure there. If we are, then we start backing down the line and find out where we're losing losing the vacuum or the pressure, negative pressure, whatever you want to call it. So the proper tools, smoke test, uh, really understanding what the code is. And you've got to read through those codes, not just the description, but understand – the parameters necessary to have the car for, work for right and, and mm-hmm. what has to happen for it to fail to truly be able to diagnose it. Well, John, you can definitely follow up at bumper to bumper com. Hit the contact link. Send me an email with the specifics of your vehicle, maybe a VIN number, and I'll be certain to get you a sequence of operations or trouble tree, more information for that code. And, the, and New River's a long trip from where we are, but one of the bumper to bumper shops, the closest one up there would be Kurtz Auto Repair. 22nd in Bell. Yeah, 22nd Avenue in Bell. If you're close to that area, that might be a good resource for you. For sure. Well, one of the things you failed to mention, Matt, and I'm picking on you all day long Jeez. today, is today is uh, this month is National Car Care Month, and uh, you'll have more details about that at bumper to bumper radio.com. But you can, uh, there's a free inspection uh, that we're offering at the bumper to bumper shops. So head to our website and you'll find more about that. We're going to go with D.D. in Mesa on a 2003 Chevrolet Malibu. Go ahead, D.D. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Good morning. Um, I bought the car used last October, and I've had a, a slew of issues recently. 
Um, but when you mentioned the air conditioning, that's what prompted me to call in. My air conditioning dial has off through five, but it doesn't actually blow any air until you hit four. And the other issue is that if it's not recirculating the air, you can kind of start to snog it off and get a little bit of a headache. Um, so I leave it on the recirculating, but every once in a while, it just moves back to bringing the air in, and I haven't been able to figure out why it does that. Is there an actual switch where you can change it, to, is it or is it a, just a button for the recirculate or fresh air? Uh, there's two buttons underneath the fan dial, so you get the fresh air and then the recirculate on the right. That's a little concerning that you said if it's on recirculate, you, you can get a feel headache. like it's, you're, it's you're backwards. Yeah, I would think it would be the opposite of that. You know, that's 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 a little bit concerning because we don't want to. Does the car have any exhaust leaks or anything like that? I actually had a check engine light come on uh, Super Bowl Sunday, actually, um, and the code that I had pulled at the um, parts store said it was an EGR um, with insufficient flow. Okay. Um, and pretty much what I've been told is that it's not really a big deal unless you have to go through emissions, which I don't have to do until next year. The other issue that has recently come up is I was driving to lunch one day, and it, I was at a stoplight. When I hit the green, it shifted really hard into to second, and I took it to a shop, and they said there's another code hiding under the EGR one that says there's an internal failure in the transmission and you need a new transmission. Um, but the, that particular sy- symptom hasn't happened since. Mm, Boy, that, that, that makes that's going to get Dave get fired yes. up. There's no code that says you need a new transmission. No. I think okay. There's, some pro- there's a couple of things. I'm concerned that you might have some sort of, of, of exhaust leak that – your description is a little bit backwards of what I would think. We definitely don't want to make sure we're just, you know, sucking on a tailpipe while we're driving the car just with, right, with, the, right. with the fumes coming in. So so that's a, 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 an issue. But then the air conditioning control issue, if it's just going back and forth, there's a series of motors and controllers that, that point the air where it's supposed to go. Uh-huh. So that could be an issue. The fan problem is it's not the fan. I can tell you that because the fan is only going to spin at the speed that it's, it's, it's told. told to do. So you probably have a resistor issue there uh, okay. with, with the fan. And then uh, what was the, it? the fan, it's easy. The transmission thing has got me so, you know, I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pro- probably the code you have just based off your make and model is a P1811 code pretty common code but it's not a it's not a new you know go get another transmission it just needs to be repaired it's not a you know if it is the 1811 code a lot of times it's not a major repair but don't go throwing out a perfectly good transmission yeah and it sounds like you've got a couple problems that maybe it's time to find someone besides the parts store find a shop that you can go in and just you know maybe part with the car for a day and you're gonna have to spend you know 100 200 dollars possibly and just it, especially since you said you recently purchased the car, and just give it a once the bumper to bumper check over. So front to back, let's establish a baseline with it. Find out what those codes are, and then see what their recommendation is to in in a prioritized order to take care of. And I agree, some of those check engine lights not a big deal until you need to get through emissions. If it's not going to make you break down, it's not going to cost more money by waiting, depending on what the budgets are. But you don't want to just ignore them for the sake because somebody at the parts store said you could ignore them because it's not a big deal. And and the perfect example is there's another code hiding there. If the light's on and you have a new problem, you don't know it. Right. So that that's the other that's thing. That's the problem with a, a light that just stays on all the time. Yeah. <clears throat> nothing's going to tell you something's wrong. If you don't have a good shop that you trust and you've been working with or you're looking for a new one, a new relationship, bumper to bumper radio.com is a good place to start. There's a handful of them in, in Mesa, Desert Car Care, Accurate Automotive. So depending on where you work, where you live, get on there, check, look at the map, check it out, and just call them and, and uh, just have a five-minute conversation with them, and, and they'll give you good advice and, and steer you in the right direction. And if you want, go ahead and hit us at the contact link on bumper to bumper radiocom and we can personally refer you to someone. Just let us know we talked on the air, and, and we'll remember the three issues that we talked about. So thanks so much for the call, Dee, Dee We are going to go with, looks like, Spencer in Gilbert on a 2006 Toyota Sequoia. Go ahead, Spencer. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. 
Thank you. Appreciate your time. Okay, so I have a 2006 Sequoia. It has 89,000 miles. I have a full factory warranty up to 100,000 miles that expires at the end of this month. Had a few weird issues with the transmission, but nothing that is easy to replicate. And was wondering if, if you know, if there's specific symptoms that you would um, recommend that I bring it to the dealership before the, the warranty expires, or if uh, you would suggest taking it to a third-party shop that specializes in Toyotas before I take it to the dealership for that last one last trip under warranty. This I think this is kind of like Groundhog Day for Dave because this is a common problem on Toyotas with the with the weird transmission problem. But I hear two questions here. Dave will talk about the transmission problem, but I want to talk about the the warranty. You probably have an extended warranty. Maybe you bought that warranty when you bought the car or you bought it as a certified used car. There is not a factory warranty that necessarily goes to 100,000 miles unless it's something where in some cases they have extended uh, an extended program because of common failures and stuff. So I want to assure you that I'm most certain that your extended warranty work can be done at any repair shop. So that's one thing, and Dave can talk to you about the transmission. Well, the next point, one of, one of the things that we find at dealerships is they don't generally take transmissions apart and fix them. They don't really know anymore what's on the inside of the transmission. So they're not going to, you know, you need to widget this or widget that. It also, also on there may, and makes it hard to diagnose. So there's plenty of good independent transmission shops that can diagnose the issue in a, you said, Toyota-specific, you know, <clears throat> In, in our world, transmission is a transmission that's transmission. Um, there, there's very few transmissions where you know it's real specific anymore. You, you see one transmission in multiple brands, so it may be a Toyota transmission or an Asian Warner transmission that's in a, you know, it's in a Volvo, it's in a Chevrolet. They use them across the industry, so it doesn't have to be a Toyota-specific independent transmission shop, but that can be diagnosed. And I get your concern is if this thing's going to have a major problem before it goes out of warranty, I want to take care of it. So when we come back, we've got an open line at 602-277-5827. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen. I think I just I ha- cut him off. In the, I, I had were- the microphone oh. on, dude. You stepped all over me. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I think you, you're on the show You now. lost a little seniority not showing up for the last two weeks. That's just the way it's going to be oh, until I see some real commitment out of you. So, anyway. Well, one thing I do want to clarify on some of your comments. Longer warranties. I'm seeing a lot of, you know, a lot of the General Motors product in, uh, uh, you know, 2008 General Motors. It's got a five-year, 100,000-mile uh, powertrain warranty, which includes the transmission. So, different Different eras of cars had different warranties. You can remember when uh, Chrysler offered a lifetime drivetrain warranty? Yeah, that was real short-lived and <laughs> lots of fine print. Lots of fine you know, print. Well, speaking of this, I'll b- beat them up a little bit. We talked about the, the, the marketing department and the reality and the engineers. We were looking the other day at some maintenance schedules. on some older. When I say older car, I'm talking about five years old, not a new car, but still a newer car. But in any case, we thought, what the heck is this? They want the differential service to every 15,000 mm. miles, and it's got synthetic fluid. Why? Does it, and then you go back a year, and then we start looking and go, oh, isn't that amazing? Now that they've offered the 100,000 right? mile or the lifetime warranty, now suddenly this needs to be serviced every 15,000 miles. Mm-hmm. And guess what? If you don't have those receipts... Adios, amigo. Not doing no it. No warranty. Not doing it. So, well, um, before you get going too far, we're going to take Tiffany in surprise on a 2005 Volkswagen Jetta. Go ahead, Tiffany. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hello. It's um, actually a 2004 Jetta TDI, and I've been having uh, intermittent problems with it. I've had it um, at a couple of dealers several times, and what happens is... Um, when I pull into the driveway or I go to turn it off, um, everything shuts off. My clock resets, the radio shuts off, and I try to turn it over. It won't turn over. If I leave it sitting for 10 or 15 minutes, it'll turn over again. Um, at the same time, sometimes when I put on my turn signals, the radio will turn off or the car starts to die. How often, because that's the first question I ask on an intermittent issue like this, what's the frequency? to so does, does it happen every day or once a week or once a month? It goes, it goes in spurts. It can happen every day for a 
few days a, a week, and then it won't happen again for a couple of weeks. Then I'll start up again, and then I'll I'll bring it in. They can't get it to hit on any codes at the dealer. Okay. And well, then it'll be fine. Does it have a factory radio or an aftermarket radio? It has an aftermarket radio. That is a problem a lot of times on the Volkswagens. We see that a lot. I can't remember exactly what it is. At my shop, we work on a lot of Volkswagens and Audis. There, there's Charles would know. I wish he's here today. But there's a there's something weird about aftermarket radios. I don't think that's the problem necessarily, but that's one place I would look. Okay. And then one thing that you might be able to do, you need to be careful that you don't shut the car off while you're driving, is wiggle the key a little bit. It sounds like like an ignition, ignition switch, switch problem. problem. I, I I originally was going to say, you know, maybe there's something going on with the starter, but getting hot. That's common after mm-hmm. a car is very hot and been running. And you go to restart mm-hmm. again, it won't start. But that's not going to make you lose the, the clock and everything. And, yeah. There's one thing that's a common denominator here. And we're going to find a bad battery connection, a bad mm-hmm. ground, a faulty ignition switch possibly. So what you're doing when you're driving – Paying attention, please. <laughs> you know, you can wiggle the key a little bit, almost like you want to shut the car off, but just move it back just a little bit, maybe forward just a little bit, and see if that can make the car stall or, or affect okay. anything. Wiggle the keys. Uh, not a big deal on, on the Volkswagen because the key lock cylinder isn't as integrated in, as it is in some cars, but you don't want to have a big, heavy set of keys hanging off your keychain either. That okay. will cause, you know, can cause those lock cylinders to fail prematurely, but it, it's... Um, well, I think it, it goes to the topic is that you need to take some good notes. So you know it happens every so often, but you need to figure out the pattern. You know, if you get to a, a you know a good shop and if you need one, Matt's a great one because they do all that type of work uh, at Virginia Auto Service. But take go ahead and take those notes so you have information when you go in there and say this is when it happens. One of the things we do things we do with people that have a real intimate issue and we look at it, look at it, look at it, can't find anything. We say, all right, listen. You're not going to have to make an appointment next time you come in. I want you to, you know, as soon as that car acts up, I want you to drive it straight here, and I want you not to turn it off. You pull Don't right up to change the door. anything. Pull right up to the door, come in and, and, and say, hey, my car's doing it right now. You know, that's something that we have to do sometimes to catch these intermittent issues in the act. So it's, take good notes and see if you can work out a relationship where you can do that. And, and, a, and this is not going to be a code issue. No. Fault codes are going to be... I mean, there's some cars I was reading in a magazine this morning, the new whatever has 26 control modules in it. All those modules have the ability to set codes, but they're not, they're likely not going to, there's not going to be a code that sets for this. And if you're losing a main power supply, guess what? All those codes are erasing more than likely when when all those modules lose power. Because if your clock's losing power, that's it's the, everything. It's everything's going dead at that point. I'd bet. What do they say? Dollars to donuts? It's an ignition switch. <laughs> I've never heard that one. So we're going to sneak in Ron from Peoria on a 2005 Silverado. Go ahead, Ron. You're on Bumper to Bumper. Hi, this is Ron. Good to talk to you. Go uh, ahead. Hey, uh, I have a transmission. Well, I just want to know about my transmission. Uh, my, my office is right right across the street from your office in uh, Price City. Excellent place to be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but a lot of my friends have been over there, and they're very happy with your service. But I have a hundred, I've been neglecting my truck. I have 150,000 miles on a 05. And the oil, oil looks good. It's full. It doesn't smell bad. And I drive, I, I live in Peoria, and it's like, oh, I don't, I don't hot rod or nothing. And I just, is it okay to just come in for a regular service, you think? Absolutely. I mean, I don't know when the last time you serviced it was. I never have. Never, never have. have. Okay. No, well, it's, that's what I'm, I'm cared about. Probably that late in the game, what I would recommend to you is just the traditional transmission service, first go around. Okay. Just, just okay. traditional, so not a flush, nothing nothing exotic like that. But we're just going to drop. I don't hot rod. I just like drive like there's an egg on my gas pedal. I mean, I, I don't. You right. Know, I just, and it sounds like never. you do you do a lot of highway driving, so the transmission is not going through all the gears all the time, and it's easier on it. But uh, I won't scold you for waiting that long to service it. So, but I would say just do traditional. But but there's another. I'm gonna interrupt you real quick, Dave, because I don't know if you were gonna go there or not. But before you take that car in and have Dave service it. That's the important part is let the, they'll go on a test drive and make sure there's not some symptom that maybe you're not seeing. Look at maybe a slip rate and make sure there's nothing going on in there that you don't know about because if there's already a problem, a service isn't going to help it. 
but you want to make sure there isn't something happening there that you may aggravate by doing a service, right? Am I right, Dave? Yes. No, if there is a problem, yeah, maybe we don't want to service it. But if there isn't a problem, we absolutely do because there's going to be a problem if we don't. So anyway, glad you could share your Saturday with us to find a great shop for National Car Care Month. Are you talking to me about sharing the Saturday? (laughs) BumperToBumperRadio.com. If you're looking for a personal referral, shoot us an email at the contact link on that webpage. We're there. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. Thanks, Peter, for putting on a great show. And, Matt, I hope you come back next week and enjoy the weekend. Because you won't be here, right?